Hello, hello, hello. Hi guys. Good morning. Welcome back to a new video. Ki hal chal. I hope you guys are doing good. In this, we're going to see a problem. Rotating the box. So it is saying that we are given an M cross in matrix where a matrix can have stone by hash. We say it. Uh, a stationary object, which is star and an empty space, which is dot. Now we have to rotate the box by 90 degree clockwise and following some condition that it is falling due to gravity as we rotate it. So as I rotate this specific box, it will, these objects inside it will fall due to gravity and will look like something like this. But these objects will only fall due to gravity in its own, in its own row, which is, I should say, in its own column. They will not go anywhere apart from his own row, which means this will fall like this, this will fall like this. As you can see, this falls like this, falls like this, falls like this. So they are not interacting with each other in that sense. So we have to ultimately tell a new matrix. Obviously, if it is a size n cross m, it should be size m cross n. You have to tell the new matrix which is fallen. So if we look at it very carefully, that is the ultimate question for us. Now, as we look at it, what we realize is that firstly, we will be given some specific matrix. Let's take this one in this case. Firstly, in the in each row, I have to shift all the objects to as right as possible, considering I should take obstacles in consideration. As you can see that if there is obstacle, it will hold that object in its location. It will not let it go as far as possible. Obstacles, obstacle will hold that specific row to not shift it as far as possible. So we have to make sure we have to shift each row Take in consideration that each row is shifted entirely to the right and then when the array is completed, I will simply make sure to transform this horizontal or I should say this matrix to the matrix which looks like vertical stuff. How I will do it. As you can easily see, it is simply two step process. Firstly, you will be given some matrix. You will be given some matrix in which what you will do each row you will shift all the objects as right as possible, as right as possible, as much you can go. And then when this step is done, you will simply take this input matrix and rotate it by 90 degree. We will see this rotation point in example three because it is a bigger example. But considering that we are simply trying to shift all these objects to the right side, let's see now what we, how we will do it. Again, a very, very basic brute force input way could have been that I have given this matrix. I will simply iterate from the end. I will take a new matrix here, which again, again, when I say new matrix, I am only going row by row because each row, all the objects are being shifted towards the right part. So for this specific row, I will take another matrix where I will choose, let's say from the, from this row, I, from this row, I will choose the last objects and in the new row which I have made which is representing the shifted row I will simply again try it to shift okay this is let's say i this is let's say j I have object yes shift it then move both of them backwards j and then i do I have an object here like no okay shift it but the final matrix should not shift it and again I will do it row by row for both for this entire input matrix here I have one row so it is pretty simple in this case and then oh it is an object here simply copy it and then shift both of them i and i oh the input matrix itself is entirely traversed and thus I have achieved what the corresponding horizontal output matrix should look like and this is the matrix and ultimately when this is done your next step would be simply rotation which we will see in the last example how we how we will rotate it so this is what i did by making a new matrix as you can see can i do it in place obviously i should be able to do it so let's see how we'll do it in place so as i showed you these i and j pointers i will take same empty pointer and a corresponding j pointer j represent a column simple right we are handling only one row at a time so again, we will see, okay, uh, the empty and the J both have, both are here. And obviously I have this, uh, this obstacle here. Okay. Move both of them. So I move 
एम टी कम्स हेयर जी ऑल्सो कम्स हेयर एंड अगेन एम टी पॉइंटर नाउ ओनली मूव वेन इट्स एक्चुअली नॉट नॉट एम टी सो ओके हेयर वी सॉ दैट जे इज नॉट हैविंग नथिंग सो ऑब्वियसली जे वे मूव बट एम टी पॉइंटर विल रिमेन देयर इट सेल्फ बिकॉज नेक्स्ट ऑब्स्टेकल शुड कम एट दिस लोकेशन आई फाउंड आउट ओके दिस इज द ऑब्स्टेकल ओ सिंपली प्लेस इट हेयर now move both of them so e will come here and j will come here oh it has exceeded the j which is the input has exceeded so this i have replaced the input matrix in place i have replaced the input matrix in place cool uh, so this is how simply we can perform the operation now if i ask you is it that simple obviously this above operation which we saw we will apply on each row so yeah each row that i will try to shift each row here and each row here how i will do it i would have simply as i mentioned i will keep an empty pointer here and a j pointer here oh it is empty oh the j will move oh it's obstacle no worries j will move obstacle an uh, empty j will move but technically in this example what happened my j is pointing here again i'm talking only for one row at a time because for each row the operation will apply similarly so for this row obstacle is here so shall i remove obstacle from here and put it here that should not be the case right because the obstacle came because of this obstacle the new empty location should have been this one which is just before the obstacle so what did i miss the thing which i actually missed is that as i am moving towards the left if i encounter the obstacle i should reset correctly how what i mean by correctly i mean by that is that if in the very beginning i had empty i had j empty will help me to put up the correct new locations and this should be the final state so what i did is okay empty j simply move j oh now uh, it's j is having the value simply put it at the empty location and then both move of them both move move both of them so okay now i realized j is actually having obstacle now because of this obstacle and obviously if there is obstacle uh, there will be no stone here so next time anything before this obstacle should never cross this obstacle so whatever empty index i was pointing to earlier i should make sure it should now be brought before this j which means e should become j minus 1 and then i'll simply move my j also back okay it's obstacle yeah obstacle simply put it and move and move both both move both of them <laughs> what happened today okay uh, then e and j here okay e will still remain here and j will move because there was no obstacle i sorry because there was no stone i simply move that specific stone here and then ultimately i move both of them e will come here j will come here and okay j has exhausted so we have achieved a final result so you realized the only change which we did is that as soon as my box index encountered a specific obstacle i simply made my empty pointer move to j minus 1 and if i go back and tell you that what was happening here is i was simply taking my empty and my j pointer and i was simply saying as i am moving again i am moving from the back so for my j is moving from c minus 1 j is moving equal to 0 and then j minus minus at every location where there is a actually stone i have i'll simply make sure that which means that okay at the look if i put it like this there here i had my index j and here i had the empty location so at this location i had my stone it should be brought up so this should become a dot at the actual index j and wherever i have empty it should become a obstacle so at the same thing that at the index j i will make it empty and at the index empty i will put the obstacle also i i should, i should say stone and i remembered back again that at many places in the very beginning i spoke obstacle 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 but it was actually a stone but yeah i i hope so like you got the you got the gist of the helpful diagram so this is the change and obviously whenever you are placing a stone make sure to decrease your empty pointer and rn why not decrease the j pointer because j pointer will automatically decrease in the for loop so obviously j will always be decreased but empty pointer will be decreased only when the stone is being placed right and this is the crux which we will perform 
to do the movement from the right and this is the crux which we will perform to actually handle the obstacle also so that again the only change is this specific line that as you encounter a obstacle make sure the new empty location becomes j minus one now everything is perfect now what you have achieved here in this case is that for for this example op your new array will look like stone here stone here stone here stone here stone here and for this array it will look like stone here stone here stone here and stone here and these will be dot and dot which means stone here stone here stone here and stone here now your task will be you are achieved you have achieved this array or this matrix you have to rotate this one now it is it is not how a simple matrix rotation question will be because if you remember there is also a very famous question rotate a matrix now the the fact or the benefit of that question here is that you can perform the operation in place if it's a n cross n i am telling you do the do the rotation again n cross n you can perform the operation in place you don't have to make a new array for it because here if you remember we kind of utilize the space to perform the operation in place which is kind of optimization but here we cannot do that optimization to perform the operation in place because the array size itself has changed so i'll have to make a new array of a new size but if that would have been a n cross n array then i can take the help of a problem rotate matrix that's a very 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 famous problem this uses of uses a concept of transpose of a matrix to actually get the result in place of rotation but again this we should not apply here because obviously it's not required what we will do in rotation is if i check just once again these kind of problems are more of pattern based if i can figure out the pattern what is happening i will be able to achieve the corresponding result so pattern says okay let's say if i see the location of this specific cell where it will be located in the final matrix it is here but how i did, how did i figure it out i figured out okay this is row zero and column one this is nothing but row one column something so this thing if i just keep it like this it rotated so row and column okay it it was at index it was at index it, it was at column one it became at a row one so i very easily can see that whatever is the column whatever is the column number that will be my new row number so whatever again so for me box of 0 comma 1 it technically became a final box of 1 comma 2 so whatever will be the column number will become a new row number that i can simply swap so if this is i comma j my final box this row will become a j but what about the what about okay i got the row what about the column because it is not matching as such so if it was a row 0 it technically became the last column if it was a row one, it became a second last column. It if it 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 was a row two, it became the zeroth column. What is happening? You are shifting things to the right side. So if it is a column i, sorry, if it is a row i, you are trying to get. You know that you have three rows. You are at a zeroth row. You are trying to do a kind of you know rotation. So zeroth row is becoming the last row. So you are taking in consideration how many rows you have. You have three rows. This will become the last row. If I say last row, which means out of three rows, this should become the last. Last one, which means, okay, do a sub subtraction of zero. But again, this is indexes. Indexes are usually zero based. So do a minus one for the zero based stuff. Thus, you will achieve the last column where the things should be. Thus, I realize that if I am on a specific row i, I will be able to achieve the corresponding column here by saying r minus i minus 1. Again, r because I have r rows, i is the current row which will represent the current new column from the end minus 1 to make it zero based indexes, like zero based indexing. Thus, I will be able to achieve this specific trans like transformation. Again, this is more of a pattern recognition rather than more of an algorithmic problem. Cool. Thus, I will be able to achieve this pattern or this uh, relation that final box, again, input box of i, j will be nothing but final box of j, as you can see, 
this j will become the corresponding row so this became a row and the corresponding column became r minus i minus 1 thus it is a simple two step process the first step will be simply iterating each row going from the very back and applying this operation and ultimately when the matrix is completely done then simply applying this operation on each cell and getting a result let's see the code is exactly same firstly i made a final matrix or final box uh, here in this case i went on to each row i took the empty pointer from the very end i went and iterated from the each row from the end itself again make sure this is very important from the end itself i did this so I applied the same operation, same two operations. If it is an obstacle, make sure to put the empty as j minus one. If it is a simple actual box or like or actual stone, make sure to put at the jth index empty and at the empty index, the actual stone and decrease the empty. And then when this portion is done, which means you have shifted each row individually to as much right as possible, considering the stone also in picture. Sorry, sorry considering the obstacle also in picture. And ultimately, when this is done, your now only task remains to convert the input matrix, which is this, to output matrix, which is this, of a different dimension altogether, which ultimately says that again, here you can iterate in any direction, either uh, from 0 to n minus 1, or I should say 0 to c minus 1, or vice versa also. It, it doesn't matter as such, because now you are using a new matrix, so it doesn't matter as such. So what you will do again the same relation that final box of j r minus i r minus i minus one will become box of i comma j and thus the time here will be o of n into m space technically here will be o of one because you are not using any extra space the space which you are using is kind of the space which you will have to have to use because you are making a new input array cool uh, thus the space will be o of one here and time will be o of n into m because you are iterating on all the cells of the matrix ultimately cool i hope you guys got it if yes then to smash like baby if you have many new content uh, or many new surprise on twitter again that content there is actually haven't been posted anywhere yet so yeah you if you want you can go check go and check it out bye bye take care